And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. What's up, my man? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Nobody puts uh, McCarthy in the corner. Huh? Nobody that. puts baby in a corner. No, no. Come on, Dave. <laughs> name us that movie. Maybe. Name us that movie. Uh, I don't know. Jeez. Oh. Jeez, come Cinderella on. Cinderella Man? Huh? Is this Cinderella Man? No. Cinderella no. Man. Dirty Dancing, dog. Come on, baby. That's it, man. Patrick Swayze. I can't remember the girl's name, though, but she went off and got a nose job, and I forgot about her after yeah. that. Her name was Gray. What was it? Something Gray. Damn it. Yeah, she but. she ended up getting a nose job. She didn't even look that. She did. She, nothing like. Uh, the girl from Dirty no, Dancing. Look her nothing. up there, Dave. Yeah, she yeah. had a, a, a big schnoz. Yeah, totally, cha- totally changed her look. Yeah. Completely. That doesn't... Look at yeah. that. Totally different person. Yeah. Why do you do that? Uh, Why do... Win, win, Jennifer Gray. Thank Jennifer you Gray. That's a cool name, yeah. if you think about it, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I... She's I, over 64? Huh? So she's over 64? How old it's, an it's an old movie. It's an old movie, bro. You, I think you were still in your dad's nutsack. Let's be honest. Patrick Swayze is <laughs> no longer with us. Yeah. Dave was still swimming around in his papa's nutsack at the time the movie was out. <laughs> Dave's in there doing the breaststroke. At least he's doing something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the good old days. Let me see. Like, like, pull up the picture of she when she was in Dirty Dirty. She is in the, the middle one up there. Yeah. It's like she had a big nose. Yeah. Yeah, but she's a cute girl. No, she was. She was. And then, then she had the nose job, and she, I was like, who is that? And then that was her. Hey, they always want to change. No, I'm not happy. Yeah. Yeah, come, come on. on. Just be happy with who you are. Take a look at your nose. Big old round bulbous thing. Look at mine, man. Big old long fucking thing. Did you just it talk shit about job. my nose? I, I did. We were talking about the actors, not me. It man. wasn't no. your jawline I was talking about. No. I didn't say get surgery on your jawline. No, See that? you would never say that. It's just no, too much. Couldn't do that. <laughs> you probably would want me to get it since there's no competition. Like, oh, please. Yeah. Competition? Yeah, like, I don't think so. There is none because I'm just so chiseled right here. This, this Ooh, jawline is? is extremely chiseled. Let's, let's take a look at that hairline. How's it doing? It's getting it's 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 getting a little thin, John. It's getting a little thin. You see right there. But you know what's funny? It's it's not because of my age. Because I've got all these damn scars from Tony Ferguson. No, 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 no. Oh, Don't yeah, blame John. Tony for this stuff. No, I'm blaming Tony. Look, you are you are going what from what we call a forehead to a five head. <laughs> <laughs> for it to, I'd say it's not hair loss, it's just facial gain because pretty soon I'll just be all face. Is that it? <laughs> facial gain. Oh, like that. man. That works. Uh, well, hey, we got we got a lot to talk about. We got the PFL, uh, which was on Thursday, which I completely forgot about until I started seeing highlights of the very first fight on the on the Twitter. <laughs> um yeah, and then we've got the UFC from last night. Uh Dave's probably gonna throw in a little bit of WrestleMania because he was up late last night with his little ones. Uh, chis- I don't understand that. Hold on. Let me, uh, Dave, since you are a fan of that, you've got two days, right? Of WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Do you have to pay for two pay per views? No, it's on Peacock. It's on Peacock. Yeah. So it's you pay, free? You pay for the subscription to Peacock. Ah, so you pay, okay. So now let me, uh, if you're, if you buy a ticket to go, do you have to pay? Yeah. Is it you, or you go the first night or you go the second night? Yeah, and you can, but you can, they have packages and everything. So, but yeah, it's be, it's become an expensive extravaganza. Oh yeah, that's it. Mm. It's remember how uh, International Fight Week was same shit, but it's a whole thing now where you buy for the Hall of Fame both nights of Mania. They do like a WWE World now, which is like a an experience thing that you go walk through. Um. <clears throat> So there's a whole, it's a whole weekend. There's an NXT show as well. So they do like a whole thing. I heard Brock's guy, Paul Heyman, got into the Hall of Fame there, huh? Yeah, he sure did. Cool. Yep, yep. All right. He deserves that. Yep. I've heard a lot of weird things about him. <laughs> oh, he's... Yeah. I mean... Yeah, he's, a, he's, he's a businessman. I mean, he's not pissing on people, but... Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. That's a yeah. That, that's what that's what the big time people oh, do. <laughs> Man, now. yeah. Just rub your feces Woo! all over yourself, and now oh, <laughs> come on. Come on. Yeah, it's like, 
Look, I've seen enough weird people in my life. I don't I don't want to see any more. And Dave's a huge fan of these guys. Unbelievable. I know. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, or- he, he's in it, he's in it. And if somebody wants to participate because they think he's going to get their career moved forward, that's up to them. For, what? Excuse me? <laughs> what the, Dave's what over. did you just Dave, say? If you're people gonna, are into what they're into. I mean, Dave, if you're going to say stupid shit like that, at least show your face so we can put a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Come on! This I mean, is horrible. I can't believe you just said that. Which oh, part? That, did okay? Hold. On. Did you see the video of? And I, I don't know his name. He, he was a comedian. He kind of stopped. But did you see the whole thing he had with Matt Reif? Mm-mm. And they were together in a meeting. They were both offered something. He goes, "I got up and was walking out the door." Cat Williams basically. No, it wasn't Cat oh. Williams. No, I was, and I walked out the door. And, yes, yes, oh, yes, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. But and look at I. Hold on. Here, here's the whole thing with that. Whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna do. That's your choice. Go ahead. But I know that that's true because that son of a bitch put it out, and you know, hey, he can get sued like a big dog if that you can't prove that that's true. And it's like. Wow. I mean, okay. everybody right now, like Cat Williams came out with all this stuff, not just about Diddy, but about all the other things. Man, it's getting wild out there. I All the stuff that was talked about. My in, stuff's so minor compared. Who, whose stuff? <laughs> Matt's? Mine. Oh. <laughs> you know, I've walked, out on, I've, I've walked out on people. It's all about a job. Uh, it's like, fuck you. No, out, it's, right? <laughs> it's, it baffles me to think that it's been going on for so long. And it took this long for it to all come up. Oh, it's coming out too. Oh, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it, it's a, the, you know, cause you know how it's like all of a sudden the, the drip starts and mm-hmm. all of a sudden this the drip's going faster. All of a sudden it's no longer drip. Well, we are into the part. It's almost not a drip anymore. You know, I would <laughs> take all this stuff going. more serious if there was actual real like arrests and out and, and not just allegations, more arrests and more people being uh jailed and fined and all this other shit i'm tired of all this oh let's look i am so yeah but you can't hold on you can't believe anything out of these bullshit artists anymore you can't believe the fucking politicians you can't believe the fucking celebrities you hear all this stuff and it's like okay what about let's just take a look at did you see what freaking uh my man mark Wahlberg, his comment on tom hanks Mm-mm. No, pull it up, Dave. Can you pull that up for us? No, I didn't. I, mean, I didn't think about just think about that. I mean, as, as subtle a comment as it is, it's like wow. It, look, things like and this it, don't surprise and me. These are the stuff that this. I, no, it doesn't. But it's like he just made a nice little uh, comment saying, basically, uh, no, I will not work with him. I'll pray for him. Ah, very nice. Ooh, hey. Look until until, until we uh, there's at least one arrest made from that Epstein list. I don't believe shit. <laughs> like too, too many people are fuck it's, having friends. Hey, you owe me a favor. I, I don't it, look. I wouldn't. I, I, I if someone came out and said, hey, "I'm going to put out the list," I would vote for them, just because yeah. I want to know. I want all those hey. people to fucking hang, every single one of them. It's disgusting. All right, look. Before we get too much, I want them all out. Yeah, that's true. I want want them all on fire. This is true. All of them. This is true. (laughs) Uh, All right, look. That's a that's a great little comment by Mark Wahlberg. Actually, he's kind of grown on me. Yeah, grown on me. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Did Did you see someone used AI for? uh, (laughs) Someone used AI to use Trump making a rap song about P Diddy. It was fucking great. It was so <laughs> comical. I was, I was falling over laughing. Uh, all right. Hey, you know what? Before we get too sidetracked and too much off uh, off the beaten path, which we're supposed to be. We are an MMA show, not a politics show, not a pedo no, show. No, we are. We're, we're, <laughs> we're just going. I, it's the point. It's like, it's all you hear anymore. Yeah, I know. And I don't watch like, you know, all the stuff or anything. I, I have... You know, X, I guess, or Twitter, or whatever you want to call it. And I'll go on that. It's like, you can, it, it's down. everywhere. I can't take it anymore. Can't take it. No, it's everywhere. I mean, uh, what was it? Somebody said that, I can't remember. Someone said something about P. Diddy. They're saying that when they raided his house, they didn't raid his house to arrest him. 
they raided his house to take all the documents about all the powerful people in, in politics that were caught on his video cameras in his rooms that he had. Could be. That's fucking crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. You know? Could be. Better be careful, Diddy man, before you get Clinton. Just gotta be Ooh. careful. <laughs> Don't mess with those two. No, man, no. <laughs> I mean, the coincidence, coincidence runs fucking deep in that family. <laughs> oh. It's weird. Um, How many? All right. Well, hey, before like we're way off time. <laughs> we're way off. All right, guys. I'm make sure you guys hit that fun. subscribe button. I wish I should. Why talk about MMA? I, Let's go with Paul. Yeah, I should have <laughs> said subscribe before we got into that mix. All right, guys. Hey, hit hit that subscribe button down below. The thumbs up and the bell and the notifications. Look, UFC 300 is coming upon us. So guess what? There's gonna be a lot of content this week. So I want to thank you guys so much for uh, subscribing to us. And uh, hope you guys enjoy the show. We are we gonna start with the UFC or do you want to start with the PFL? But whatever, Dave. Well, Dave's got the UFC after. Let's go UFC. Welcome to the show, Dave. I know. It's <laughs> I've got it right here. No, I'm asking you a question. Come on. He's buddy. already on the couch. Yeah. Start he's strong. Already and already on the couch. He's already on the couch. I, mean, I, I want to remind strong. people that one day we were supposed to film after a show. And uh, Dave texts us at 2 a.m. as John and I have been waiting on the thing for hours. And it's like, yeah, okay, I'm awake now. It's, yeah. <laughs> right. it, it used to be podcast Dave. Now it's Dave on the couch. Dave on the couch. <laughs> Dave on the couch. Uh, I have one of those instances. I'm pretty sure, Josh, uh, you have like several. So. I do not. I do not. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. And then we and then we have a 15 minute explanation about, you know, step by step how we how you ended up in that situation. Oh, it's great. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, so it's UFC fight night. What number was it? Like 90 something? 91. 91. Alan and and Curtis, this fight delivered, John. It delivered from beginning to end. Fight. It was a great fight. It was a good I, I, Okay. I'm gonna I'm going all the way to the end. Of course you are. Of this. Well, no, <laughs> that's the, what the decision between, is. Between the fourth and fifth round, I thought Eric Nixick, who we've you know had on our show, we both love. Beautiful job. Yep. Hey, I need five minutes from you. I need this. Boom. I want you to do the <clears throat> And and I and I love all the guys from Kill Cliff. How are you telling him you've won all the rounds? How are you doing that? Come on, you know if if you have that much trouble seeing your guy getting hurt at times mm. in the fight, and understanding, hey, he didn't win that round. You, then bring someone with you that's going to give you a true opinion of what's going on in that fight, because you are doing him a disservice as far as. He thought, look, I, I, I've got this thing. All I got to do is get through the round, which wasn't an easy task for either of them. But, uh, I mean, I was the one thing I was like, man, in a fight that close, you're telling him he's winning. You know, you've got this. You know, you got all the rounds. And I was like, wow. Did you have That's Brendan Allen winning? Statement. Winning the fight? Yes. And, and the reason why <laughs> is this. If you're the judges and you're looking, at the end, that sequence, because the judge can't doesn't you know can't feel things. All he, all they can do is go off of, oh he's hurt. Yeah, and that the actions of Chris Curtis with you know look it's a torn hamstring, so that has a huge you know impact on his movement. But then you see the knee from Brendan mm -hmm. Allen in that round because it was a, you know, it was a fairly tight round. I had Chris Curtis winning that round. Yeah. You know, but I ended up giving it to Allen based off the last 15, 20 seconds of the round. Yeah. He looked hurt. And this is about damage. Yeah. And it really ended up being something more than, you know, it wasn't what Allen did. It was yeah. self-inflicted as, you know, if you want to say, or just part of this. Do do re Brian. do judging and refs like you got to take in like for me I because we would know the backstory that he took the fight on short notice I looked at it too like he was just extremely fatigued I didn't look at it as sure. being for me when I when I saw what happened he got hit with a good shot but for me it looked more like fatigue just so tired he gave it his all the last thirty seconds I'm like when he's falling into the fence though yeah he's trying to hold himself up into the fence, the fence. he's exhausted I, well, he, He's not, no, he's having a hard time holding himself up. Yeah. And it's not, you can tell it's not exhaustion. There's something different. He just went through four and a half minutes mm. of being able to control his body and do all these things. And all of a sudden now he's falling in. You don't know about no. his leg. 
you know, and so I, I can understand. And it would have changed. It would have changed my opinion on that round. But and I think that you know, even though I don't think the knee did anything now, mm. it did look like it during that moment. Interesting. And it looked like Chris was hurt and got in trouble. And so I understand. I think all every judge went with Allen in the fifth round. And I think. And I thought, for the most part, you know, Chris Curtis was winning that round, even when it was close. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I f- I felt like maybe that he won, that Chris won two, three, and four. And so I and in the fifth, he, I thought he was winning too up until you, the last. You could have said he won two, yeah. th- two, three, and four. It was close. Yeah. This is one of those fights, you know, people are gonna say, Oh, he got robbed. No, he no, didn't. No, he didn't. Robbed. No one got robbed. It was a freaking good fight by both. Allen looked fantastic at moments of it. Mm-hmm. And it, look, his ability to, you know, especially his use of the takedown to turn it into back control. Chris Curtis turning that, you know, for the most part, many times into being able to reverse the position, a la like a Michael Chandler, the way he spins, mm-hmm. you know? It's those but, stumpy bodies. That's what it is. It's that stump. small, yeah, yeah, small waist, you know, where the tri- where the, the figure four is not quite as tight and you have some room mm-hmm. to move within it. Then you're right, stumpy body, but explosive, explosive power. Yeah, what they do is they get that arm on the other side of the head. And once they get the arm yeah, on the other side of the head, there's nothing it. really holding them there because you can't turn back into them. That's like yeah. that's pretty much my only back escape I've ever learned. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, like you just slide your back off to the to the floor. If you can slide it off to the side. Yeah, you slide your head off. Put their head on the far side, which is on the up position facing the ceiling. You put your head to the mat and you slide your back off. And as you do yeah. that, you bring Shoulders. their hand, their hand on the other side of your head. For those of you guys, I'm trying to make all these arm gestures and stuff. The mic's in the way, but <laughs> and then you can start to try to wiggle back into them. And if they try to turn into you, you just punch their arm away so they can't. I mean, it's a it's a great technique. It's one of the best I think back escapes there is, especially if they have the figure four on you, because mm-hmm. it puts them in a very uncomfortable position. Um, yeah, I, I look. I'm not. I'm not going to say uh, who I thought Chris Curtis won the fight. It was a very close fight. I think I gave him two, three, and four, and I had him winning five. Um, I just looked at it like the last 10 seconds was just straight exhaustion, but it did look like he got hit with a big shot against the fence at the end. You know, and then I did hear, oh, you know, he tore his hamstring. <clears throat> I guess we're going to see the results of that and, you know, what happened. But uh, did you see that Marvin Vittori came on social media after that and talked to yeah. hell shit? Dave, can you hell pull that? Shit. He said, "He said basically that Brendan Allen call, making callouts for championship fights when you look like dog shit. I'll tell you what, if that's looking like dog shit, you can look like dog shit in every fight because man, he he showed everything that you want out of a guy. There was times in there that look he was taking big shots. He took body shots. You knew that hurt him. He was in, he was in control at sometimes, and he was in trouble at sometimes, and he just kept on coming forward." kept on trying to you know meet up with chris curtis who was putting a lot of pressure on him and uh, i thought he i thought brendan allen had one of the best performances i've seen him have uh i thought he had a gritty performance i think that's why i'm not talking look i'm not saying there's been many fights that he's dominated that's that's not the ones that show you who's there no. This is the kind of performance that shows you exactly what Brendan Allen is. Yeah. I, I, it, w- it wasn't easy, man. No, I know was it wasn't easy. Some of it. I know it wasn't easy, but I, I can, I'm not, I'm not going to jump on the Marvin Vittori van, bandwagon. I think, look, dude, you didn't fight. So just shut up. That's kind of my take on that. You're like, the one that pulled out. Yeah. Don't, don't come over here and start talking trash. Like you're on your, you're at home on your couch. You know, like I still made the fight. <clears throat> so let's, I, right, something could have been said, like, I wasn't impressed by your performance. Okay. Yeah. And then the old George you know, I'm looking line. forward to getting that, that fight with you now, you know, something yeah, like that could have been said, yeah. um, but whatever, man, you look like trash. All this other, come on guy. Come on, buddy. <laughs> uh, you know, and the other thing too, is that Chris Curtis is one of those guys. I didn't know this. He had the best takedown defense in the 185 pound division. I didn't know that. Six takedowns. Well, it was like, no, it was like a 93 or something like that. He only, no, t- no, no, no. He did. And it was at 90 some percent. Yeah. And Brendan Allen got six. Yeah, I know. That's oh, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> I was saying like his he had like a 93% takedown defense, and then he was able to get him down. I mean, 
We're going to find out. I guess Vittori and Allen will probably eventually fight. Who knows? UFC has been known to um, not put those fights back together. Yeah. So, you know. No, I think that that little bit right there, eventually you're going to see that'll be the one that sets Brendan Allen up, you know, if he gets a win over Vittori. I think he's he's they're going to come back with that. I What were you impressed what were you impressed by with Chris Curtis? Oh. <sighs> I'll tell you what I was impressed by with Chris Curtis was, first off, he was relaxed and calm when he mm-hmm. did get his back taken. Yeah. He did the right things. He, you know, he started doing some stuff that you look and you go, you're making a mistake. Stop. Don't do that. And then he listened to his corner because I could hear his corner saying, control the hands. Stop punching. Control the hands. Because he's sitting there, you know, he's reaching back and punching back. Mm-hmm. And you look and you go, you can't generate enough to hurt him with that. It just, you know, there's not, you can irritate him. You can bother him, but you can't. You're not going to hurt him. Okay, so what you're doing is you're giving him a chance every time your arm comes over and it's coming back to wrap in and to get that choke on you. And he stopped doing that. He went to the hands, controlling the hands, and then trying to work to change the positions. And then every time that he got into getting back to his feet, it was the one thing that I did like the fact that he's tried to stay with what was his game plan. And his game plan was, hey, I want to be on the feet. Okay. And he, st- he stuck with that, so I give him credit for it. There were times that I looked and said, "You have you, he's not in a position at this point of the fight, third round, fourth round. You're sweaty. Go down there and, and do damage. Start to pound on him. Start to create problems for him. You know, That was the only part that I looked at and said, yeah, I thought that he gave too much respect. And maybe maybe he should have. I you know I'm not down there with him. Maybe Brendan Allen is that he, that guy that when you feel him down there, you go, oh, I don't want to be here. But I thought Chris Curtis fought a smart fight. I thought it was controlled. He showed his power at times. He took good shots. He's just a he's one of those guys. He's 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 kind of like the Kelvin Gastelum, mm-hmm. you know, a little bit short in the body, almost that tweener. You know, but man, he's got power and he comes to fight. I love watching him. Not to mention, he's a really nice guy. I don't know if you guys ever talked oh, to him. Great he's a great guy. He's got the voice and the personality of something you wouldn't think that would come out of that body frame and the way he fights. <laughs> he's like just so nice. And uh, I was like, he is. you're not, you know, you know, he wears like the dark rim glasses, like how I'm wearing. And he just kind of, he's a really nice Looks guy. Looks like a professor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, with big punching power. Yeah, and so, power. <laughs> but, uh, I was very impressed from the beginning to the end, man. The whole way with Chris Curtis, the way he carried himself, the way he performed. Like I said, I thought he won the fight. I thought he won rounds two, three, and four. Uh, and I had him win in round five. Uh, Brennan Allen, <clears throat> good stuff. And so I think, um, look, see, Mike Bell had it the same way I did. Mike Bell, I'm, yeah. yeah, I would have probably, I was on the fence about round five because I feel like he won majority of round, almost all of round five except for the very last little bit. That whole part, yeah. like it's damaged, and then they're going to read it that it was damaged. And well, I don't blame like Kind of just like you know, See, bad, you, bad judges yeah, only yeah, remember yeah. the last thing they saw. That's you, what it you, is. <laughs> That's what it is. You, you, you can sit there and you look at it and you go, you, "I we know now," but at the moment, yeah, that's all you can go off of. Mm. I would have used my spidey senses, and they would have got it right. <laughs> and they, you know, they also. Well, I think you know part of it is. When you saw it, because it's the fifth round, and when you see Chris crumple, when the bell rang, mm-hmm. and he crumples to the ground. It doesn't look good. And he, then he's like, he lays over, and they went, oh, yeah. Nah, then, but a good fight. I mean, I wonder if we're going to see a number three, because both fights were good. I, I think you have to. Yeah. I mean, there's certain people that match up to give good Good action, good fights, everything's entertaining. These guys, there needs to be a trilogy. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, let's go to the co-main event. <clears throat> we had Damon Jackson and Alexander Hernandez with Damon Jackson coming away with a split decision. Alexander Hernandez was not too happy about that. He felt like that he won the fight. I thought it was a really tough fight back and forth. I thought Damon Jackson did the things that he needed to at times to uh, create the mm-hmm. problems for Alexander Hernandez. Does the same thing every time. It comes out super strong. He comes out throwing good, heavy, hard shots, but he eats leg kicks. Mm-hmm. 
man, he eats that calf kick. He has got to start figuring out, man, that thing is causing me a problem in my career. And let's work it so I don't I don't end up eating it anymore. But I thought it was a, a fun competitive fight, and I thought Damon Jackson showed a ton of heart in you know, <clears throat> getting him down at times, getting to, towards his back, was never able to, you know, sink in anything, but just a good fight. Did you think this was fight of the night? Like, this got fight of the night. <coughs> really? I didn't think it was fight of the night. I would have given it to another one. Me too. We'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, overall, I thought it was a good performance. Um, <clears throat> how do you say his name? Charrier? Chardier? No, no, it's not Chardier. Uh, that kid, that Char- kid impressed me. Yeah, he was good. Uh, Damon, yeah. ja- I thought Damon Jackson won the fight. <laughs> which, which one are we talking about? We're talking about, about the co main. Sorry, sorry. Was, okay, thank no, no. you very much. Uh, no, I thought Damon um, Jackson won the fight against Al. So Al- did I. Yeah, I thought he won the fight. I, I thought it was close, but, but it was a good fight. And I thought he just did that little bit more in trying to get that finish and trying to work. You know, in the end, it looked to me like you know, Alexander wanted to be in the stand up mm-hmm. and he was throwing shots, but looked like he was trying to run out the clock. Mm-hmm. In the end, while Jackson was looking to, to, you know, get a finish, go for the finish. But I think the biggest story about this fight, though, is is got to be the biggest comeback in history of Damon Jackson's hairline. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. Uh, Him, he's gone. He's gone to the same doctor uh, as LeBron James. No. He's so, going to the same doctor as LeBron and Don Cerrone. Yeah, you go. <laughs> Cowboy. Yeah. Cowboy gave him a card. Good for him, though, man. Yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah, like, it's all right. Like, we're in this day and age. I mean, these, like, he's checking his hair out. He's like, yep, I yeah. got it. I got it. That's a comeback right there. It's only going to get thicker. He's like, all that work, and it's still there. It's only going to get huh? thicker. Good for you, my man. Good for you. Hey. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if, this, if, if these cuts get any worse, I'm going to be going there, too. See how thin it is up there? It's getting thin up there, oh, ladies and gentlemen. It's going, to be like a, it's going to be like a reverse. You know, a reverse where you don't comb, you're going to comb it forward now. You're going to start combing it to the left, <laughs> the comb over. It's going, to look, it's going to look like you got a frown up there yeah. the whole time. <laughs> the old, the old C, Remember the old Caesar haircuts where they pushed it all forward? Oh, yeah. I used to have one of those when I was a kid. Did you? Yeah, I liked it, actually. I'm going to go back yeah, to it just never. for you. Yeah, you need to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it just for you. I'm do it just for you. All right, uh, next fight: Jose Mariscal going up against Morgan Scherer. Ah, I, I really, I thought this was a tough fight. I, I was very impressed with Morgan. I thought he was super relaxed. I thought Mariscal came out like a fucking banshee. He came out on fire going after him. Scherer uh, ended up. You know, putting up with everything, working his way through it, having good moments. It was a tight fight again. And that's what made, you know, the whole night was pretty much had some good, really tight fights on the main card. And it was uh, fun to watch. Yeah, it was a really good fight to watch because, <clears throat> like you said, uh, Mariscal came out with wrestle, 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 wrestle. Oh. I mean, like, I was like, "How are you gonna? How are you gonna hold on to that pace, bro?" But then he then he rocked Morgan at the end of the at he the end. Of the, he was hitting him with some good, hard, clean he shots. Did. What it was? Yeah. It was a good fight. I'm not trying to say that it it didn't deserve like a fight of the night or like a bonus. I'm simply saying that there was a couple other fights on the card that I thought were a little bit better. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought you said Damon Jackson's against Alexander got fight of the night. No, 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 no. The Mariscal. Oh, you're saying Mariscal versus yeah. Sharia. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. That was a good fight. That was a good dun, fight. Dun, dun. I like that one. The young, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Yeah. Let's go back. Okay, let's go back. Uh, how do you say his name? Bahamandes, Ignacio yeah. Bahamandes, Ignacio Bahamandes is- against Christos Gallegos. Man, Bahamandes has just shown that he's he's good. He's really good. He's freaking long. He's got. He uses his. You know, a lot of people that are tall long and lanky like you talk about they give it away in the stand-up mm-hmm. they don't they don't use it he uses his length well his his front kick is beautiful that high kick that he ended up throwing to just beautifully placed and done set up well i thought christos came out there and was doing exactly what he needed to do to try to win the fight it obviously is going to put you in danger in doing it, but you know, you're either going to go out there to try to win, or you're going to go out there to just collect a paycheck. He was going out there to win. It just wasn't his night against a guy who's just better. I don't know if it's the look of Bahamandes, but he reminds me of Zell Huber. 
Yeah, very much. I don't know if it's like a tattoo, yeah. if, the, if no, it's just the height, the reach, the or height, the way the that look, they the stand. Hand, the hair kind of coming forward with your little Caesar yeah, look a yeah. little bit kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I thought he looked fantastic. And I, it's funny because Dave just pulled up. You know, he got five, he got performance of the night. Definitely, he should. definitely well-deserved. The way he did it, the way he was so clean about it, stayed so composed. I mean, how many fights do you have in the UFC? Two? Three? Mm-hmm. I want to say that was like his Oh, third. wow, that's a lot. He's got five. Six, oh, five. five, yeah. Dana White contender series he's got. Yeah. I remember because the sixth fight the, last night. Jeez, man. The MacDessie fight was the first one. I remember watching it and thinking, that kid's good. Mm. He's going to be, yeah. He lost it on a on a split, but, you know, wins like against Trey Ogden. Trey Ogden's a stud. Yeah. You know, so nice. That was a good win for him. Great head kick knockout. Nicely done. But John, to me, this was yes. fight of the night. No doubt about it. I, I don't Trevor even... Peak uh. against Charlie Campbell. God damn! You know, we we talked about this fight in the preview, saying, "Hey, Charlie Campbell, man, that that dude's a stud." And mm-hmm. Trevor Peak is just he just keeps coming. Mm-hmm. You know, Trevor trains with you know Dwayne Ludwig, and his, his stand up has gotten better and better because he came from a wrestling background. But man, what a fight these guys put on! I was like, at times, both of them look like I'm done. Yeah. You know, nope, coming back. Nope, I'm done. Nope, coming back. Nope, I'm done. And it was like, God damn, man, what heart by both of you. I didn't want to see either guy lose that fight. Charlie Campbell's leg so kicks impressed. were on fire. Trevor Peak didn't Always start checking. Yeah, but he didn't start checking. Trevor Peak didn't start checking, and they're trying to check or trying to move out of trying. the way until halfway yeah. through the second round. I'm like, what are you doing? His leg was welted. You know he got he had to get carried out of that damn cage. Oh. Dude, do you see him moving around at times mm-hmm. during that fight? I was like, "You're you're done." Yeah, and no, he was not. Oh. What a, what a performance! I thought, man, that was an unbelievable fight between those two. I, I don't know about thirty twenty seven across the board. Yeah, I, no, I had a twenty nine I mean, twenty eight going in the third, and I lo- I like Charlie Campbell a lot. He's from Bellator, yeah, but he's a you had a twenty nine twenty eight after the third. <laughs> yeah, you know what I meant. Yes, you had it 1919. Yeah, 1919. Going you had to the it tied up. Yep. Okay. It's a good fight though. I thought it was so, it was action packed everywhere. The camp, the leg kicks were were very important for uh, Charlie Campbell. He looked like he was fighting a little scared in the first round, but then he had a great round. So, um, uh, just everything he did was on point. He was kind of like using. He his took big, a couple of shots that you looked and went. You got a, wow. You got a beard on you, buddy. Boy, I'll tell you. Yep. Cause I was like that, that that hit solid, and you know you could tell he, he took it, took a step back, came forward. It's like God. Oh yeah, good. It was a Love. good, great fight. If you guys haven't seen that fight, go back and take a look at it. I mean, that's the reason why that was the main. That was uh the first fight on the main card, I believe. It's a great fight, man. Good fight all the way around. Uh, Alex Morano versus Court McGee. Man, this comes down to the whole you know, Court McGee tough as hell. Just a a gamer. His wrestling is solid he still used it but this is the perfect example of speed kills mm-hmm. alex morano was just faster with his hands you watched every time he would lead the attack court would try to counter and alex would counter his counter and hit him with a clean shot yeah and he hit him over and over and over with clean shots court mcgee still showed you know because a lot of people can say Oh, his chin's going. Man, no. He took some big shots. And John, he looked physically like fuller in terms of his physique, but he looked leaner. Court yeah. McGee. He's looking he's looking no, he look, like a fine wine, baby, looking better with age. He looked good. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he looked good. You know, he's just a step behind with the speed. And we talk about it all the time, man. Like, and when you get into those welterweight, I think welterweight's kind of like the breaking. Like welterweight, <laughs> oh, lightweight, geez. featherweight. You've got to make sure your your speed stays there because if you don't, you're going to be getting picked apart by the younger guys. Um, all right, so the next fight, I, I didn't get to watch this fight for some reason. It, it won't come up on my ESPN. I don't know why the Walter Walker fight. I don't know what yeah. happened. Like it shut off, and then I tried to watch it late last night, and it wouldn't come back up. You just said I fight was a little unavailable. bit surprised by the the outcome of this fight. Okay, uh, Bresky he did, did a good job. But, you know, I I look at it. Dave, can you pull up the scores on that? Is that possible for you? Da, da, da. It would be the Bresky versus Walker. There you go. 
For those of you guys wondering why I'm yawning so much, it's 5 a.m. because Dave was watching. We were going to film last night because the show ended early, but Dave was watching WrestleMania. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Walker Whitt won the last round, no doubt about it. And it was the question of who's, who you thought won uh, the first or second. And I mean, it was close. Yeah. And it was one of those ones that you can look and say, you know, a lot of people can say that Walker won that fight. He was 11 and 0 going into that, he was undefeated. I don't think that he performed as good as well as he could have performed due to nerves. Absolutely. You know, I've seen him fight before. He fights more open and free and kind of goes after people. He was it wasn't the same guy and it was the curse of being in that first UFC fight. I think the nerves got to him. I think uh the whole 11 and 0 and everything and he fought conservatively. And it just didn't work for him that night. You know, what's funny is when people criticize like the judging and stuff, but let's go over here to the media scores. Scroll over there to the left. 30, 27, 30, 27, 30, 27. Every judge gave it to Walker on the third, in the third round. Like, <laughs> it's just, I'm just, I'm going through here, right? You got, I mean, 29, 28 going, you know, the other way. Sure. You get it. 29, 28 going to Walker. There's you get no, it. Look at there's, there's no doubt Walker won. He was on top of him for well, most not of the round. A, not according to uh, MMA Junkie and MMA.uno and <laughs> CombatPress.com. They all uh, yeah, they all thought it was uh, thirty twenty seven. Come on, guys. yeah. And you take a you take a look at that. Only one had the score of the judges at twenty nine twenty eight for Bresky. Wow. And look at all the ones for Walker at twenty. Yeah, the other nine twenty eight. When it's twenty nine twenty eight one way, it could be probably most likely be twenty nine twenty eight the other way. Yeah, you know, absolutely. in close fights. I'm just taking a little jab at the media. That's the Josh Thompson way. That's all right. Okay, <laughs> they all know I love them. You know what's funny is we know all of them. They're all nice people. Just you know, you just gotta. But, but man, not all of them. Uh, <laughs> it's very rare that I meet one that I don't like. Uh, you know. No. They're good people. Look, I, I, there was like, uh, remember what's his name? Uh, Sean Sheehan. I have heard so many bad things about him. And every time he's I see him, guy. he's a nice guy. I don't have anything bad to say about him. He's a nice guy. You know, and, uh, you know, fighters tell me all the time how much they don't like Ariel. And I'm like, and I don't have a problem with Ariel. Like, I, I don't mind being like, I'll talk to him. You know, it's whatever. So, it, it, yeah, it's the media guys. It's the the, the goes great guy, fun to be around, oh, cool guy. Goes George yeah. George and his brother Brian are fantastic. Nolan King, what a nice guy. You know Mark Ramonde. Yeah, it's just super person. Super guy. Man, the media we have, you know, they're good. They're they're good guys. John they're Morgan, fun. John Morgan, absolutely. Yeah, fun dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and then also to uh, Helen and um, oh. The schmo. And the schmo. <laughs> I think his real name is David. I've only known him as the schmo, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, great people, it's man. Good, it's great good people. gig. Great people. All right, all, all right. right. Next, Norma Dumont against Jermaine Duran. I mean, man, this was a this was a tale of two different fights as far as first round. Norma gets the takedown. He's able to stay on top. She wins the round. Second round, Jermaine basically beats her up. Does a great job. Stays on the feet for most of it. Wins the round. Third round. Hey, it's same problems exist from up. when she left. That's it. Take down defense. Gotta be able to get up. Well, yeah. the other thing too is back in the day, she was still had she still had some speed. She had the power, but you cannot load up the overhand right like that against someone who you know wants to take you down. You gotta stop throwing that. Throw the uppercut instead. You know they're gonna yeah. try to shoot because that's where they're coming. Yeah, and so. I don't understand that adjustment. And one of the things I used to corner Jermaine when she was at AKA for some of her UFC fights and they drove me nuts. She didn't warm up in the back and it, you can kind of, yeah, she just, she would jump rope for about five minutes. That was it. Didn't hit mitts. Really? Shadow box a tiny bit, a tiny bit, not even like a lot. Didn't want to hit pads. I tried to hold for her. She's like, no, I'm like, you got to okay. do something. You got to burn it out. Nothing. Yeah. Nope. You know, if you're if you're sitting around in a hotel for two three days, all that lactic acid, all that your body needs to get moving. You gotta you gotta yeah. get it moving, and you could tell because sometimes she was kind of a slow starter. She would come out and just get tense, and then come out and you, you got to burn it all out. Okay, did she did she at least uh, do a workout? No, 
the morning of nope. the fight? Really? Not with, not with me. And I cornered her, I think, three times I cornered her. Nope. Wow, that's it drove crazy. me nuts. It drove me absolutely crazy. She's like, no, I've been doing this my whole life, my whole career. I'm like, it doesn't mean anything it's, to me. Most fighters, the morning of the fight, mm-hmm. will actually go through a workout, go through a, a little burnout session. Yeah, but the thing is, though, John, like in kickboxing, right? A lot of times they use that first round as a warm-up. Sure. And But not in MMA, you don't get that. If someone wants to wrestle, you're going to wrestle, which means all that blood's going to rush to those yeah, muscles. Which means, which means you're stepping on the gas hard. Yeah, and then that's fatigue yeah. sets in. All that blood rushes to your to your muscles, your lungs, everything. And you're just like, all of a sudden, <gasps> can't get a deep breath. Your arms feel super heavy. And then it could be a snowball effect if you start taking big shots for because of that. It drove me crazy. But look, I'm glad that she's back. Tremaine, do me a big favor, though, man. Work on that tan. Okay, because you were looking a little pacey last night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like the like, she has a sense of humor that it, it it's a little vulgar and i actually really love it about her she's a great person she's always fun comes in with a smile she's a great person i enjoy being around her great training partner as well um fun to train with fun to kick when with. she kicks you in the Except face when she kicks you in the face but you know yeah. <laughs> it, it only bothered me because i was tired <laughs> that was it i was like super frustrated uh any other fights on here you want to talk about? I know I want to talk about the Matsumoto and the Argueta fight, but any other? That, was, that would be one that was... Matsumoto versus Argueta. Great fight, man. Argueta came out aggressive. Matsumoto was getting takedown after takedown and just grinding on him, hanging on him. But, jeez. Leaving your head in the wrong position with one second left to finish the second round. Like, you just... Oh. 459 baby and <laughs> what i love is it he didn't do a gsp with the with the matt hughes arm bar he waited to as long as he possibly could but john this goes back into the i want to ask you this would they have stopped the fight if the bell rang and matt and argueta looked the way he looked at the end of that yeah okay just wanted to know just one because they he let go and he was and he rolled back a little bit and he was all you go it, if you go back like oh I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I've lost consciousness mm-hmm. or anything yeah you're done they're gonna say it's the end of the fight they're not gonna let you get choked out even though I've seen it okay in, in smaller promotions no in the UFC that's not gonna happen in Nevada no they would have stopped the fight and said no no we saw it in Texas remember the guy got triangled until he was unconscious he got tra- he got trialed so long he woke up in the triangle that he had to get put back to sleep then he got that's his arm broke. Yeah, That's what I said. great stuff, smaller, Texas. Smaller promotions. Yeah. Great stuff, Texas. <laughs> Sometimes you see stuff. You got to give a credit to Nora Cornell. Man, beautiful knee to the body. She just folded Melissa Mullins and then just went after her. You know, didn't even need to. She was done. That knee to the body. You can see what a, a body shot will do to someone with that and just folded her over. Kind of chased her across the the cage a little bit there. It's it crippling, a, man. It's crippling. Man, it's horrible. Horrible body feeling. shot, boom to the. It doesn't the matter. Worse, the crippling, it's painful. Uh, uh, see, see, people, you get hit to the head, you don't feel it. You know, when you get hurt, you don't feel. Oh it. no, John, you really do. You feel it only no, when you don't get no. knocked out. You knocked <laughs> out. You get... That's what I'm talking about. Oh, when, you, when you're getting knocked out, you don't feel it. It's like you wake up. It's like. Okay. Nah, shit. Yeah. yeah. Unless you get the, unless you get the spins and stuff in the back. Oh, that's not. That's I've never had that, but I, I've, I've heard of. I've, I've seen people have that. Yes. Uh, remember the guy who fought Dan Henderson in Strike Force? Uh, he had the. Uh, he was a judo guy. Dreads. Uh, he fought in in Japan. Uh, Are you saying fought for Dan Henderson? No, he fought. I, if you're if you're talking, I think about, he did fight um, for Dan Henderson. Yeah, so he's so from could Cam- you? Uh, so could you? So was so, so could you? you? Okay, okay. I'll, yeah, he's from Cameroon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he never fought Dan. No, he, he didn't fight Dan. Him. You're right. You're right about that. Okay. But I, no, he fought uh, Fei Zhao that night. He got. I think he got knocked out. Yeah. Two of them fought. But man, he fought in, he fought in pride against. Uh, I want to say yeah, it was Rogerio mm-hmm. Nogueira, and knocked him out. It was a big time. Win. Man, he fought. He had, a, he had a couple of big time. Scrolling wins. down to Strike Force there. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> you had a lot of long. You missed it. It's up there. It's SF. Oh no, there it is. Okay. Uh, who did he fight? I'm trying to think of who he fought. Strike Force. That's Strike it. Force? Was it just That's it. Was it just yeah. Gegard? Yeah, Gegard Mousasi. Oh, okay. I thought it was someone else. 
Interesting. Interesting. Man, he got a lot of fights after that fight, huh? Oh, dude. He fought for a long time. Yeah, he did. Fought KSW. Bellator, fought everywhere. Jeez, you fought Karatanov as well? Holy he fought Lynn Vassell, if you remember. Jeez. Thiago Silva, Matt Hamill, Paul Bonatello. Yeah. Wow. Man, crazy. Dude, you talk about a guy that was put together. Dude. Yeah. He would come out with that predator mask. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's great. He had power, super aggressive. and yeah. <laughs> That was the problem. He had power. He was super explosive. Yeah. And it's that it's that whole thing of you're blessed with you know fast twitch muscle fiber. There's benefits. Mm-hmm. That's where that power comes from, and that's why you're so fast. But there's also receipts that you got to pay because mm-hmm. in the end you get tired. Oh yeah. And he would get tired, man. And it was as soon as he got tired, it was like, oh, it's over. Mm-hmm. Different fighter can't do the same things. All right, well, hey, that's going to break us into uh, Bellator. But before we do that, go to OnlyFans.com slash Bellator. Only fa- sorry. But, PFL. Like I said, Bellator. <laughs> I mean, all the fighters are from Bellator, so it's Bellator. <coughs> um, They're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. I did a live last week. It was a hit, man. Probably my funnest one I've done for those of you guys listening to us. It was so much fun. Because uh, there was a guy named Jonathan on there, and Jonathan's probably listening to this show right now. But man, he had nothing positive to say about the fighters. And I was like, bro, dial it back, brother. Dial it back just a tiny bit. <laughs> and he was joking back and forth with me. And then everybody else saw there was just cracking up laughing. And uh, we were talking about some barbecue stuff. We were talking about fights. We were talking about uh, just everything, man. We had a good time. So if you guys want to join us over there for OnlyFans.com slash Wayne in, it's free. No subscription. I mean, you subscribe to us, but uh, we don't charge over there. We're just trying to get more people on there. You got DJ Demetrius Johnson is on OnlyFans. You've got Luke Rockhold. You've got um, uh, Ariana Lipsty. You've Stipe. got who else? Stipe Miocic. Stipe Miocic. I mean, you, you've got a lot of top level fighters that are on there. Go ahead and check them out. You got um, Luke Rockhold. You got Chris Cyborg. There's plenty of them on there, so go ahead and check them out. Content's available there, and uh, I think a lot of them are also as free as well. So enjoy. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it, and uh, I'll hopefully we'll try, try and do another live sometime this week. We'll see. All right, let's get into the uh, PFL. This is the opening round to see who makes it in, correct? So they get two fights outside and then two fights into the tournament, correct? No. Okay. Explain. This is the op- This is the opening round of the season. This is where you start with your points mm-hmm. being you get if you win three points and then depending upon you win in the first, second or third, you get additional points mm-hmm. so up to six points. And this now starts to add up. You have two of these fights that will put you into the postseason. John, that's what I exactly just said. I said there's two fights to get into the tournament. <laughs> there's the, you just said that. Well, this is no, this is the tournament. <laughs> This is this is you. They call it the postseason. Yeah. So if you have the most points mm-hmm. or the second most points, you know, third most points, fourth, that they take the top four mm-hmm. because you figure they start with ten fighters. The top four will go into what they call the postseason, and then the finals. And this is why so it's kind of like this is why people like have a hard time following bracket. along, John. Yeah. Okay. Look, but my point is, is that there's two fights to see who can score the most points to get you into the actual real tournament. Yes, you said that perfectly. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) John wanted to give me the roundabout way. I thought I was losing my damn mind. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's so funny because, you know, I'll do stuff like with my daughter. And she looks at things completely backwards in the way to explain something. She'll explain, do it. And I'll kind of be like, well, no, you'll do it this way. And she goes, that's what I said. No, you didn't. You did it backwards. You were doing it backwards. John, she is a female. Good point. Good point. <laughs> it's like they do everything different than the way we do it. <laughs> mine, mine just doesn't work the same. It's okay, man. My <laughs> wife is the same exact way. I'll be like, I just, why don't you just do it this way? And she's like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And so she does it. I'm like, you could have just done it this way, which would have cut out three or four steps. But you know what? You've got to let them do it in their way. good. You have it in it's their mind. Good. Got to let him do it. You know, I like with my son, I just got to let him fail until he gets, until finally looks at me. He's like, can you help me? He's like, can you help me? I'm like, figure it out, kid. 
figure it out. That's one thing that enough like parents these days just don't do. Figure it out. No, get it, used to saying that. That is so important for them to be able to sit there and have to think through the problem and figure it out. Yeah, it's a good thing. I didn't start doing that till about the last since we moved to Texas. I didn't do that. I don't know if it was because the pace of life that we had in California was like it was faster for me just to do it so we could get going. Yeah. Now I'm like, hey, nope. if you don't, if you Good. can't find your soccer shorts, we're not going. I know I'll they're, what, what, I know they're in there, kid. <laughs> if it's simple as where's your soccer shorts? When I when I used to uh, teach at the LAPD Academy, you know, I would get a class of fifty to hundred people, depending upon you know how many they were doing things. And honest to God, I would say that. Seventy percent of them would have some type of degree. They would have either you know BA, BS, masters, PhDs. And I would always look at someone that was a PhD getting into law enforcement and say, "What is wrong with you?" Yeah. You know, obviously, all that all that PhD shit is bullshit because you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> all of these people, and you would have, you know, a fifteen percent of it or so would be uh, military, right? And so they had some background and things right and you would have 15 percent that didn't and it was amazing that all these people with all these degrees and everything could not make a fucking decision to save their lives and it was because their entire lives mm -hmm. people told them oh you go here they read a book they answer they put do a test and they never had to use common sense and it was like i have all these people with all this paper and there's some of the dumbest people i've ever because they can't make a decision to save their life I'm gonna or take, somebody else's. I'm going to take it one step further. I just watched this thing. Um, these two military uh, Marines guys, they do the recruiting for the, for the Marines. They've got yeah. guys, they've, got, they've had people come in, men and women, that have their bachelor's degrees. Some of them, oh, yeah. a couple of them have master's. And they're like, why are you joining the military? They have to take some test to get in. Could it's it, called a, Go ahead. What, has about, the has about. Couldn't pass it. What? <laughs> Couldn't pass it, John. I love that. I love that. David, did you see there There was this, uh, God, we would talk about, I don't think she had a PhD. I think she had a master's. She might have had a PhD. But it was a, a whole video thing, and it had this uh, group of people. And it was, I, I think it was six women and one guy. The one guy was from the military, mm -hmm. right? And so they you know, had all the people and they had her, she was the, the mouthy one. I've, you yes, know, I'm, I've I, seen this. this. And, you know, let's, let's put people in the position where you think, you know, smartest, you know, smartest to, you know, least, right. She puts him at the end. She's at the very top. Right. No, it was the rank. It was, it was ranking for ranking of for, their IQ for their. I, no, was it IQs? I thought it was IQ. financial ranking, ranking of their IQ. Okay. And there's the one I saw. It was the ranking of the IQ and Reese. They fucking do the IQ test. He's at the top. She's at the bottom. And I go, yeah, it figures. It just figures. Yeah. It's like all that paper and dumb. Because he dirt. was younger. And she's like, oh, he's young. He hasn't experienced life. He doesn't. She she ranked second to last. And he ranked, I think, number one or number two. And I, I was laughing. like, his, and He was very soft-spoken. She was very outspoken. Yep. Oh, yeah. It was it was pretty funny to watch, man. It was yeah. I thought it was ranked on based on like a uh, job and what they thought their salaries were based on how they talked. And so then when they did the IQ test that came along, cause they were like, well, how much do you think they make? Well, he doesn't look very smart. Like he doesn't talk very well. And like, he's probably only making all this, but his, you know, his IQ is higher than yours. She's like, she kept saying like, I'm very, I'm very intelligent. I ranked high. I went to this school. Oh, yeah. I went to this school. So, I'm so smart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's so weird. I've met a lot of people that went to Stanford, went to Harvard, went. To... Oh yeah, I wouldn't trust them to fucking tie my shoe. Yeah, um, that's exactly it. <laughs> All right, let's get let's get on let's the better get things, into the though. PFL. Man, John, we're on a couple little rents. This is what five a.m. does to you. Look at politics and brains. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> we had Valentin Moldovsky taking on Ante Dalia in Moldovsky's first encounter as a pfl athlete his first encounter in the tournament or the season opener ante delia had been a season or tournament winner and won the heavyweight championship he dropped out after being injured in the last season he's a guy that's got to win over the current pfl 
heavyweight champion in Heenan Fahe. You know, we know he can fight, but it was it was amazing to me as they're going into the fight. Valentin Moldovsky was the favorite. He was the favorite in the fight, and I and and the broadcast and everyone they're talking about. I can't believe that he's the favorite. It's like, how do you not believe he's the favorite? He's fast. He is got speed, and he can take the fight anywhere. Where Anta Delia needs to keep this on his feet. I know he's a judo guy, but he cannot be on the ground long with Moldovsky. That's not where he's he's good. He's good if he's in the top position. He's definitely not good off his back, and he's going to have a hard time getting to the top position. And it was like this fight started, and right away, yeah, you saw a difference in speed. Yeah, I mean, and Mold- Moldovsky just started teeing off on him. Yeah, he faster fighter, uh, shorter in stature. Delia with his chin up in the air, uh, fighting backwards on his back foot. Didn't fight like he was the bigger fighter. Uh, he fought no. like he was the more timid fighter and was afraid of the speed, which he, he should have been. I mean, I think he was also afraid of being taken down. Yeah. But look, Moldovsky to me right now in this, after seeing what happened, I think he's going to end up winning this whole thing. I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be hard pressed for him not to. I know that Goldsoft is a tough fighter, but I think Goldsoft's tough. Goldsoft and Dalia are very similar. Both like the, both want to keep it on the feet. Goldsoft's probably a little bit better in the takedown defense, a little bit better in the wrestling, but yeah. But Moldovsky is the way he enters in, the way he does it from his striking to his wrestling makes a big difference. He uses the Much speed to get you flinching, yeah. bringing your hands up, blocking, defending. Now I'm low level, grab the double leg, lift, scoop, okay, and then take you down. Um, it, it also helps when you got guys that are, I think, are going to be, I don't think, I know that um, Nemkov is better than all of them. And now he's at heavyweight. Now that's your main training partner. Like these guys don't have yeah. anything that Nemkov has. The movement they don't have. They don't have the power. They don't have the speed. They don't have the kicks. They don't have what Nemkov has. So I mean, outside of Moldovsky, you know, f- totally bombing and fucking it up. But I do have a question. What happens yeah. if him and scroll on down there, Dave, if, and if uh, and his teammate end up having to fight each other? Bolostini, is he Bolostini? Yeah, they're teammates. Yeah, they are. Now. <laughs> now. Now. I mean, okay, when I say now what I what I why I'm saying that is Bellastini has been with uh Team Fedor now for one fight. Mm. Look at Moldovsky has been there forever. Yeah. That's his home. And when if this comes down to it, they'll split and they'll they'll put, you know, coaches I can guarantee you which which Fighter Fedor will be sitting in the corner of. You know that. You know, he might not sit in either corner. Yeah, he might not. Yeah. Uh, he's been with Moldovsky too long. Yeah, I get it. Look at if there's two fighters out of his camp that he absolutely, you know, just is part of their entire career, it's Vadim and Valentin. Mm hmm. He's he's been there since they were amateurs. He's been there their entire career. He has been their coach. I don't think he would leave uh, and not be part of that based upon how long yeah. bellastini has been there. Got it. Uh, I mean, like, look, I look at Moldo. I'm, to go back to the commentary, <laughs> I have. A, I, I they 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 just got to start being a little bit less biased and, yeah. and, and start understanding what they're dealing with. Let's stop pretending that like PFL had the better fighters and look at, I'm not knocking the fighters in terms of, Hey, that they are not good. They're extremely talented and they're only going to get better now facing better fighters. It made their entire, look, the shows, there was some great fights on this show. There was a couple and you, Bill mm-hmm. against, you know, yeah. Blagoy. You know, people you know, have been watching Blagoy for a long time, you know, and he was, you know, in Bellator, he was in the UFC. Look, he put on a ballsy, gutsy performance against a guy that was just blasting it and he kept marching forward and just throwing shots. And you look and you said, man, what a, just a tough dude against a stud in Bilostini. Because yeah. Bilostini is put together. He hits like a fucking truck. He's fast. He's much faster than Blagoy. 
And I just, that entire fight, I loved the way they both competed in that. But there's, there was some fights in here. You look and you go, you know, there's, there's, you can, you can look and I can sit there and say, all right, you're, you're putting those two together. You know, Liz Carmouche against Juliana Velasquez. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest and say, you've got, you have, uh, Talia dynamite fight. Yeah. Okay. And so she's one of the top ones. Obviously, the PFL is putting most of their marketing behind Dakota. Dakota Cheva. The Cheva. Yeah, and she's good. Man, she's aggressive and she's fun to watch. And I understand why she they're putting their marketing you behind You left her out that she's good looking. Until. She is. She, That's what I'm saying. Looking. You left that out, though. Jim. Yeah. Smart. But, but <laughs> she has not faced the competition that's coming and that's the problem is until you there's there's levels to everything and we talk about it all the time and until you have you know faced that level you have no concept of what's coming and she's going to end up seeing what's coming you've got a couple of fighters in here that liz carmouche is going to be nothing but a nightmare for her as far as physical strength and if she cannot keep the range on Liz and that fight does hit the ground, look out. It's going to be problems for her. Juliana, the range, they match up very well mm -hmm. with the range and the way they go about things. So that would be an interesting fight. You know, Talia, strong, hits hard, good ground. It's not going to be easy for her. No, I understand that it's not going to be easy for her, but like... I just, like we're skipping all around. I, I guess for for we me, are. yeah. Let, let's let's go back up. Let's start from the top. So look, let's the, go with Goldsoft. Yeah. So Goldsoft versus Lynn Vassell. I'm gonna go back into Lynn Vassell was supposed to fight for the title against Ryan Bader, and I had said this from the very beginning when the PFL and Bellator came over. Ma mixing up all the heavyweights is what this need, what they needed. Yeah. Lynn Vassell. Um, if we were weak in one division in Bellator that I felt was the heavyweight division, we didn't have a lot yeah. of them. And the heavyweight division across the board, UFC, PFL, Bellator one, there are, it's just not a high, there's not, there's not a high fight IQ or not a, a high talent pool to pull from, you know, in this, uh, Lynn Vassell showed probably you've got all the tools. He's got, he's a big guy. He's a massive man. Okay. He's good on the ground. He's got good wrestling. He's very long armed. He's got, he's got good kicks. Just, he has his whole career has been like this. It's a roller coaster. Some days he comes in prepared, like where he can do a full three, five hard round, five uh, rounds hard, and then you get this after one round, exhausted, exhausted. Yep. But I also we look. We just gave in the UFC. You said the same thing about Walker. Anytime you change promotions, your first fight into promotion is you're never gonna feel like it feels like home. And every fighter I've talked to as of lately. Has said, yeah, it doesn't it, like it. Just they're not getting that vibe at the PFL, and they're not getting the vibe also either with Bellator. They're getting that like it just feels weird. It feels different, which it will. I mean, I think eventually it'll turn into feeling like home. But I, a lot of them are having a hard time adjusting, and so they're. Yeah. In that being said, you're not used. To, you're used to seeing the same faces every time you go, and that's what makes it feel more comfortable every time you go, and that's what gives you the ability to have have those tough, gritty, good fights. You're digging deep because that whole week you just felt relaxed. You felt good about showing up and getting in that cage and putting on a performance. I, I didn't get that from Lynn Vassell. He looked like he was nervous. He looked like, you know, he had a good first round, but after that, everything rushed to his, his uh, arms and legs, his body just yeah. felt exhausted and just nothing left after that. Nothing. Yeah. So yeah. Goldstaff wasn't, much for you know no, not much different. either in, in that <laughs> there's pressure on them though too john to beat yeah, these absolutely. to beat the bellator guys or to beat fighters that are just coming into a promotion whether it's bellator guys or anybody else yeah that's exactly it goldsoff did not do anything that you know people believed he would do trying to use the jab and stuff he, he was in a in a a position in the first round where he was in trouble mm. against a guy but this is where and again, this makes a difference, Josh. And you know it does. You, you've been under these rules. You know, when you get to the mount position, you're letting Vassell, and you can elbow, look out. Yeah. There's a huge difference in what I can do and how much damage I can do. 
I can bring, bring my arm up like I'm going to punch and slide my elbow across. There's all kinds of things that I do that I can't do in the season based upon the rule set, no elbowing of the fighters. And you saw a difference in all these fights. You know, Liz Carmouche, huge difference in what she got great positions on Juliana Velasquez, wasn't able to elbow, so couldn't do the damage that which she was able to do before, which opens up getting that finish. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Liz Carmouche versus Juliana Velasquez. Look, I'm going to go back into what we were talking about. Why are we matching up these rematches? You've got the same thing with Dale James versus Marcelo Gome. These are two fighters from Bellator. Juliana well, Velasquez. That one's understandable. Yeah, and Carmouche. They fought twice already. It was the same result. Yes. So now you have now you have Juliana. Her only three losses have been to Liz Carmouche. One person. There's there's no reason to even have this fight. It should have been something that you not at that point. No, not no. at this point. You allow you allow her to to go and fight someone else like a Dakota or something like that, but there was a reason why. Yeah, Gosh, because they want to make they're sure take, they're not going to take a chance on that. It's part of, hey, I want I want you know I want this person there. But John, go go to Juliana Velasquez there, Dave. I believe it's three losses in a row. It is done that fight. It is like I I, I I'm just it baffles me if you're putting that fight together. What are you guys doing? And, I, and let's just be very upfront. They're doing it because they want to make sure that the PFL is represented, that the PFL fighters, they want to make sure that the Bellator, one of them is going to end up being pushed out. It's, I mean. It, she's in a harder position now. Yeah, she, if because, she gets a submission next fight, she's pretty much in. She's, yeah, exactly. If she goes out and she gets a submission in the first round or a stoppage in the first round, eh, she's put herself back where she needs to be. You know, So she's not out. But she's got to perform and she's got to put on a finish yeah. to really put herself in a position to be there. Just 2022, 2022, didn't fight in 2023. She had a baby. She's a mother now. And so 2024, she's back. But all three fights, her only three losses are to Liz. And those are her last three fights. Get her yeah. some, get her somebody well, else. And the other thing is, you know, you go and you watch that first fight. Juliana was winning it. Yeah. Okay. Liz had a game plan that she was going to be on and stand with her. And it wasn't working for her, and she was trying to get takedowns mm -hmm. at the time, but you know, not finally got the takedown. There was a stop. Okay, she wins the fight. From that fight, she figured out the blueprint on how I need to fight Juliana Velasquez. And she went to it, you know, pretty systematically in taking her down, mm -hmm. and she ends up with a beautiful arm bar finish. Come on, she, in this fight, she says, Why am I gonna change that? Mm -hmm. That blueprint. Absolutely worked. I am better on the ground yeah. than she is. She was running across the cage to get to her to take her down. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. I loved everything I saw out of Liz. It was smart. It was the right thing to do. And you look and you go, okay. Mm -hmm. but, but you just took one of your better fighters and now they're sitting in that lower echelon where you have other ones. And I'm not going to say anything about it, but you got people that have six points mm -hmm. that can't beat that person. Yeah. No, I agree. I uh, go back to the main card. Do, do, do. Uh, the young girl, D Dakota Jacheva versus Elisa Maldin. Mal Malden. Sorry. Malden. Uh, Jacheva just long. She's rangy. She's fast. She's explosive. Dan she Hardy's is. very high on her. He thinks that she's going to win the whole thing. <laughs> Oh, I know. Let's just be very frank about it. I think she's extremely good. I'm kind of on, I'm a little she bit is. on the Dan Hardy bandwagon a little bit here in this situation. She's, I don't know if she's going to win the whole thing, but no one knows whether she's going to win the whole thing or not. I think that not she, easy. Look, not easy to say no. anybody's going to win the whole thing. There's too many variables, but she, she's very talented. She's got, she's she got is. great push kicks, good elbows, good boxing. Uh, you know, she's looks like she's physically strong. Um, I think, and she's extremely marketable. Let's just not beat her out of the bush. She's extremely marketable. She's Absolutely. got the look. She fights exciting. There, there's nothing you can say nope. that's bad about her. Nope. I can't say anything bad about her. She's fantastic. Yep. And she, I mean, she comes to fight. Yep. That's the one thing I love in watching. Because we've seen promotions, and Bellator did this with certain fighters. Oh, yeah. That, hey, they were a good-looking fighter. And so let's put, you know, market behind it. They really couldn't fight well. Yeah. You know? She could fight. They tried. They tried. Yeah. But she, she could fight. fight. She, there is no, there's no downside mm -hmm. 
to anything with her. You know, she's undefeated still at this point. But the problem is at 11 and 0, in my opinion, she doesn't know what she doesn't know. That's true. When she faces that experienced veteran, it's there's going to be things that happen. She's not going to know how to get herself through because she hasn't had the time. Oh, let's go back go back to the card there, Dave. But look, against Liz, the speed, the push kick, the jab, all those things are going to give Liz some problems. Liz yeah. bit, Liz Liz had problems with uh uh, the, as physically mm, strong mm-hmm. as you want to say Dakota is. D- yeah. She can't match up. She does not match up. Who? Uh, Dakota? With Liz. No, I understand the strength. I get the strength part of it. But what I'm saying, though, is that Liz also had a hard time with Deanna Bennett on the on the feet on the outside. Deanna Bennett was moving, moving, moving. And she also had a little bit of a problem with her on the ground. But that's a different story because Jeff is not going to be there. Does, doesn't doesn't want to be there. Deanna Bennett is what? Uh, wrestler. A wrestler. Yeah, yeah, I get it. She's a good wrestler. But Dakota's not going to stop Liz from taking her down. I, I, I'm not saying she's going to stop her, but I'm saying the speed, the reach, the push kick, all those things are going to pose a problem for Liz in the beginning. So she's going to have to get past all that. that. And a lot can happen, John, in that in that two and a half foot range of trying to get in and get to the body. Uh, and then Juliana Velasquez. If Juliana would utilize her grappling more, Okay. Uh, instead of being a Michael Chandler, then she would, then she would probably be extremely. Uh, I'd, I'd give her the advantage because on the on the feet, if Juliana's not worried about being taken down, I think she's gonna. She could potentially give her some problems. But I still think to Cheva. What I'm, about Talia? What about Talia? Santos, Santos is gonna be a big problem. Big problem. Big problem. Yep. Big problem. I gotta be a hundred percent honest. With that she's gonna be a there big you problem. Go. You know. Uh, and then I'll. Uh, uh, Lara, uh, Lara Joani, she could end up being in a, a little bit of a problem for her too, because if she can bulldog her way in, yeah, the strength and the, the you know the size of the, and she's not afraid to throw punches, and Dicheva could get caught in in the exchange. So those yeah. are all punches. Those are all things that I, I look at. But I do, I do have to agree with Dan. I'm not, Dan's on the bandwagon. She's going to win the whole thing and make it look easy. I'm not that far. I'm mm-hmm. thinking that she. There are ways to victory for her. When I'm looking at fights, Liz Carmouche, she's got the reach. She's got the speed. She's faster than Liz. She's longer than Liz. And she utilizes that push kick like a longer version of a jab. It's going to give Liz some problems. And if Liz runs into a couple of big shots, it can start changing the way she fights. Uh, Juliana Velasquez is still probably long, but Jacheva is probably longer. But Juliana Velasquez only boxes, doesn't really kick. If she utilizes her judo, that'd be great, but she doesn't. Um, she's good when she's on top. She's not good when she's on bottom. Juliana Velasquez, the Chevik with the speed, the turns, the elbows, the knees. I'll give her a little bit of that. The worst she's going to have a problem was no with elbows. Tal- oh, sorry. No elbows. Uh, Talia Santos and, uh, Giovanni, both of them make for fun fights, but you're kind of physically, they're both big. Giovanni is thicker, shorter, like stocky Way shorter. and but muscular though very muscular yeah, in terms of yeah she's physically strong and santos she can do everything speed on the feet wrestling grappling top control it's yeah. going to be good she's she has the reach and the range to kind of make up for the jacheva stuff so and then you also got you got kind of want nabi oh yeah kind if you want to you know kind going to have problems with mm-hmm. dakota in the stand-up yep in the way I look at it. Jenna Bishop, oh. phenomenal jujitsu. Yeah. Does a great job, but she's going to have problems getting her there. Yeah. She can't get her there. She's in trouble. She's in a lot of trouble. A lot yeah. of trouble. Let's go back up, Dave. Uh, and here we are again with another rematch. These guys fought. But, I think it was Marcelo Gomes. But, go ahead. But this is last minute. This was because Daniel James's opponent, Tyrell Fortune, which uh, was a rematch if you recall mm-hmm. but he pulled out and so marcelo gom was put into it uh, that's like there was no reason to have even daniel james and tyro fortune fight again put him against someone else i agree uh, uh frustrating uh Bagoy and bellastini best i thought it was the best fight of the night bangers but B- B- Bagoy though just it. a traded aka known him for a long yeah. time very nice very durable um, used to boy, he's durable. Used to be DC's main training big partner. Shots, yeah, he could take some shots, man. But he's at that age, John, where he's like, "What do I have to lose?" He's like, "I've got plenty yeah. of losses. It doesn't matter. I've got plenty of wins. Doesn't matter. Like, 
I'm out there to try to get this win. He just came forward. I mean, uh-huh. and you could see his age was getting, a little, he was getting a little bit tired at the end, but he just kept pushing. Sure. And even at the end, Bellastini just looked at him and looked down and just like hunched over, like, oh, I'm exhausted. The Bellastini at the end of the second round, when you know, his mouthpiece came yeah. out right, and ding, right? He was really, he looks down, he's, he bends over, grabs it, and just stays there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. And stands up. He goes, so, you're in trouble. Yeah. But, um, you know, and then uh, Talia Santos versus uh, Joani. Beautiful performance. Great job. Just made a beautiful adjustment to the back. You know, Joani you know, overextended. Beautiful job by mm-hmm. Santos. Don't freaking make this a war. Be smart in your mm-hmm. attacks when you get the chance. Take her down. She did that. I thought it was a, a very clean, smart performance by Santos. Popoff versus Maori. I expected more out of Maori uh, using his reach and his size and all that, but then he just looked he looked like he ran into a Linton Vassell. Extremely exhausted after the first, like end of the first round. Just got tired. Just looked tired. Just exhaustion. And then is Popoff out of Popoff's out of uh Fedor's also. Okay. Yep. Three guys, John. Yep. Yep. One of them's guaranteed he, to make the final. He's new. <laughs> he's new. new out there. He's new too. Uh, Shayna uh, Young versus Watanabe. Watanabe just looked fantastic. Top control, just back everywhere. It just took the fight everywhere. You got to get the finish, though. Yep. You can't have that much control and not get the finish. You got to get nope. the finish. Plus, she missed okay, weight. Let me ask you a question. It's driving me crazy. I don't know if it's because they don't feel it or anything. Shayna Young used the same uh, technique to get Watanabe off her back multiple times. In that she's flexible, mm-hmm. she can stand straight up with her legs, and she folds herself over and starts. Shaking. Why does she not go to a Suluev stretch? That leg is sitting right there, and it's like you have submissions mm-hmm. available to you. Go for it, grab it, take it. It's right there. I don't think they know. I don't think they. I don't think I've I haven't seen anyone in Japan use it. Maybe they have, maybe they have, but I think I think countries cultures they yeah, they maybe. pick up certain things and then it gets ingrained into the martial arts that's in that community and it goes so uh and then it starts to eventually trickle into some of the other areas when you go to vegas you train at certain locations then that person that did it now shows it to the other guys and they start seeing it more and they realize how it works and you can get the tweaks i would never really try a submission submission that i didn't feel comfortable with until i learned it from someone who actually was known for it yeah. And like, it just, it was one of those things. I don't know. I just, okay. Making sure that my weight was put the right place, make sure my hands were gripped the right way. However it was, but yeah. Uh, Watanabe though, she's got to get finishes. She missed weight also too. So even though her three point, no, she did miss weight. Oh, sorry. She young young missed weight. Yeah. All right. So then Jenna Bishop, I thought she looked fantastic as well. Great job. Great transition. Um, yeah. she looked phenomenal. The one fight that I wanted to get into was Demetri Ivy versus Lucas Brennan. Close fight. Can I ask you a but question? Lucas, yeah. And I, I live in I live in Texas. Lucas mm-hmm. and Chris Brennan, his dad, live in Texas. They live in Frisco, like literally 20 minutes, 15 minutes down the road. They are great, great people. Yes. But how do you do you I don't want to say you separate them, but you've got us you've got to bring somebody in to work on his stand-up. Boy, you do. Somebody that is just his stand-up coach. Because he, he may be able to wrestle, but his wrestle is not All-American level. Okay? And so he needs to work on his wrestling as well, which his brother is an All-American, by the way. His older brother. And then you also need to bring in a striking coach. They've got to have more work with that level. And it just showed last night, like, he should have beat this guy. He was a plus 1,200 favorite, I believe. Biggest, biggest, uh, he had the biggest betting odds. And he came up short. Should have never have happened. Never. I, I think he had all the talent. Now, this could be another case where it was a big new promotion. All these things going in, but no excuses, man. No excuses. Like, this no. is it. I thought Dimitri Ivy fought a very good fight, smart mm-hmm. fight. Kept himself safe when he got into trouble, and, and, and Brendan was on his back and got to him, just stayed composed uh, and tried to keep it on the feet mm-hmm. as much as possible. It was a smart fight by him. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I like Lucas a lot, man. He's a really good kid. Like, we, yeah, he is. he's so nice, always smiling, always friendly. Like, he's just a really good kid. Comes from a good family, you know. His but he does need to have yeah. somebody refine his stand-up mm -hmm. game. He does the same particular movements with his heads back and forth, and he does this yep snaking thing that he he gets into, mm -hmm. and it's going to be end up causing him a lot of problems. It is because what happens is if you've noticed when he snakes a little bit to the left on his, sorry, on his uh, right side, right side, he yeah. leaves his left hand out there. So yeah. it's like, it's not even close to his chin. If you're going to snake snake with both hands close to your chin, he's reaching with that pawing with that lead hand. And those are push kick up the middle. Those up to the face. You're going to get fucking Anderson Silva. I mean, the, it, all these things can happen from that position. So if you keep dipping yeah. to the right like that, I'm going to fate one way and then throw the head kick, a la Josh Thompson, Nate Diaz. Like, you're going to get these things. And so as the level gets higher, those things are going to start happening. You've got to make sure you're ready for them. So, yeah. but good kid, man. Good. I thought he, I thought he fought good. But when you're on the back, you got to have a little bit more sense of urgency to get that finish. A little yeah. bit more striking, a little bit more grounding, switching grips left and right, pulling the forehead, pulling the chin. You know, even scooping up under the nose, whatever it yeah, is. Taking, man, take it. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. you can't stick your fingers up, but man, I can bring my hand across yeah. and make it to where your head is coming up. I agree. All right. Hey, and also, honorable mention, Bryce Meredith. Great job. Great performance. Looked really good. Yeah. I think your stand-up's coming along fantastic. Uh, you know, he wasn't afraid to throw. Took took some big shots, delivered some no. big shots, and utilized he the rest. Delivered some. Absolutely. He looked good. He looked really good. Yeah. So he's growing really very good. rapidly, and I like that about him. Um, all American out of uh, University of Wyoming wrestling. Yep. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up our PFL talk, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the, the Ty Rulotolo and Cade Rulotolo. Cade, look, we're just gonna give them honorable mentions uh, because bottom line is they both had a beautiful. I would. It's a rear naked oh. kind of side choke, but John Kim sending me this video. I don't think he realized he sent it to me like three times. You know, because he was so excited, he was I just he was so spamming it to know, everybody man. he knew. And he just spanned me like three or four times because he loved the sweep that Cade got. No, Ty. Oh, sorry, Ty. It was Ty. Mm -hmm. Dude, he did a sweep to mount. That is, It was basically a scissor sweep, but it was the way that he performed. Josh, I've never seen anybody. I, I look for transitions all the mm -hmm. time that, you know, I go, man, that was so well done. So beautiful. I watched that transition of him taking Mitchell, uh, sorry, Michelle, I think it was mm -hmm. name, and sweeping him to a mount position where I don't know how he kept his body in the position he did. It was absolute poetry in motion. It was one of the be most beautiful mounts I've ever seen. I just wanted to look yeah. at, I've seen the very best. That was absolutely remarkable. I, w I wish we could put it on here just so we could see it, but unbelievable. The way that I look at these two, they are the future of the sport of grappling. Look, I love what Gordon Ryan's doing. I love everything. He attacks, he's, but he also can lull you into being sleepy, and then he attacks the legs. He can lull you into being sleepy, and then sweep you, get to the top position, and then attack the arm. These guys don't stop moving. Maybe they can get no, a little that's sloppy. The difference. Maybe they can get a little careless, but guess what? They don't care. They can get themselves out. They're going for it. And this is the yeah. future. Like if you want to make, if you really want to make this an Olympic sport, you really want to put this on on national television. You've got to have young men like this. You've, oh. This I'll watch these guys any chance I get because they're phenomenal to watch. They're always trying to finish. They're giving up position. They'll give their back. Just to hit to a position. I mean, they don't give it, but they 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 try. You know, like if they get put to that position, they don't panic. They don't shell how, up. How about the arm in rear naked choke? Love it. The, both both of, them. of them. So obviously, together they're training this technique, and they understand this is the angle I need to create. This is where I need to be. I mean, both of them arm in rear naked chokes for the win, yeah. and you look and you go. They attack. The entire time that they are on, you know, on time, you know, on the mat. I want to say they're they're in a in a ring for this one, but they're attacking. Mm -hmm. They're going after something, and I and I've watched you know them multiple times with different people, and I've watched people just try to defend, 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 defend. And man, I'll tell you what, this is the future, as you're saying. Yep. 
of you want to see jujitsu. I I watch Gordon Ryan all the time. He's unbelievable. But there are times when he's going up against someone that he's not a wrestler. He's you know he's got decent wrestling. He's got phenomenal jujitsu and positioning. And so he'll take his time with a wrestler in that I can't just get you down with a normal takedown. And he'll he'll slow play the the clinch work and the stand up and all of everything that's happening with it to get it to where I can turn it on. These guys don't do that. No. No. They they don't slow play mm-hmm. anything. They just go, 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 go. I'm attacking. I'm attacking. You know, will this work? Nope, that doesn't work. Let me go to this. Let me go to this. Let me go to that. It's remarkable how much they're doing and they look like they could do it not only for the time period that you know they're out there they they could do it for two hours straight no problem yeah because um they're not on steroids (laughs) (laughs) they're very vocal about it they're very they're clean fighters and i love that about them they are very vocal about the fact like test any time and i would love to compete against anybody Anybody, doesn't matter. I'm a clean fighter. I don't care if you're on your juice, whatever it is, I'm still going to beat you. Fantastic. Great kids. I've known them since they were eight, nine years old. Yeah, I just aged myself. But uh, but yeah, they were sponsored by Ruka. I met them in the Ruka warehouse back in like, I don't know, 08 or, or 011 or something like that. They're fun to watch. Yeah. Um, they're just great, fantastic, and really great people too. Uh, great family. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance, go ahead and check out their matches. Uh, they fought, they had their competition last weekend on, uh, in one FC. Check them out, man. It's available probably, um, online or on YouTube. Uh, Dave, you got anything else for us, bud? <clears throat> yeah. Let's, uh, look at this potential heavyweight bout, Jamal Hill. <laughs> is it really a potential uh, heavyweight bout? Is it really? According to Jamal Hill, it is. According to Jamal According Hill. According to Jamal. He says, uh, I'm 240 right now, bro. I'm trying to tell you I'm a big boy. It's possible. What the fuck is a power advantage? The game is, it doesn't matter who is more powerful. What it comes down to is who's going to get hit first. We both get power. You can be a thousand times more powerful than me. I hit you first. What does that mean? That's game. I like that fight. Uh, Tom's a great fighter. I had a fun, I had a fun fighting against him. So, you know, that has got to get through Perea first, but the double champ, uh, the next double champ is potentially... Jamal Hill, if he gets his wish. Well, Jamal Hill first has to get his title back. Let's just let's put that there. As far as he's got a big fight coming up next week, and uh, it's going to be a, uh, a, a it should be it won't be a grappling match. It'll be exactly what he's talking about: power versus power. We're going to see whose power you know hits first. Like Jamal Hill's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a good fighter. He's absolutely fun to, to just watch. He's you can tell he's got a great personality. He does all kinds of silly stuff. You know, this is gonna be my this is the, should I which which walkout should I do? And he does all these different things with these, you know, wearing wearing funny things. He's obviously got a great personality. Tom Aspinall has got a great personality too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and, <laughs> And I don't think that right now that's the matchup you, you want to go to. I'm not saying that you're afraid of the man. Obviously, you're not. But light heavyweight is a great division for you. Clear it out and then go after Tom Aspinall. That's a horrible matchup for him. I, I believe It's so. a bad matchup. Look, I, I get it. Anyone can be knocked out. You can catch him on the way in. But you, I don't think – I mean, maybe Tom would stand with him. But when you know there's an easier road – it's just to take a better in road. Yeah. Better and a road. better a, a road that you have a distinct advantage yeah. in. Yeah. Physically, your size, physically, your no. strength, all those things will be a big advantage to Tom Aspinall and just him being on top. All this. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in that fight to be honest at all. I don't think it's, I think Jamal Hill needs to stay at the 205 pound division, try to I continue like to on, try to win that title back and continue on at 205. Uh, there's some great matchups in there for him. And uh, who knows? Uh, you know, maybe we, we may end up seeing some barn burner fights between him and Alex Bahia. Maybe they'll do it three times. Maybe we'll get a trilogy Ooh. out of it. That'd be great because you know that that Alex is not going to try to take him down. No, I, the, the, it's exactly what he's talking about yeah. here. You, you can hit harder than me. It's the one. That, it's the one that gets the you know the weapon to the target first. Yeah. Okay, I agree with you. You're absolutely right. And you've got a guy at 205 that can do that too. So that's why I cannot wait Yeah, for that fight. 
Okay. Should be good. Let's go. Should be good. All right. All right. All right. Is there anything else there? Oh, here we go. John Jones accused of assaulting drug testing agent threatening to kill her. I mean, so, I've, I've heard that weighing in is blocked on John Jones' social media. I found that out today. Really? Uh, I, we must have said something along the way. Look, I like it's John musical. Jones as a fighter. What's not to like? It's just the outside stuff. That's it. That's all. I don't understand. I don't. I don't get it. Like, just take the drug test and move on. Like, and John, you pointed out something I didn't realize. I because I hear it all the time from fighters. Man, they fucking come early every single time to the house. They'll be there at six a.m. They'll be there at five thirty. Whatever it is, I think they can't come Horrible. before six. Six, I think. Uh, yeah, something like that. Um, now this is a new company, though, so I don't know what their rules yeah. are. But John, you pointed this out. It was four in the afternoon. Yeah. What is early? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't get. I don't what get are it. you doing? Well, I don't know what his what his you know his body clock is and when he's doing stuff, but. Four o'clock in the afternoon is not what I would consider early. But. Well, she did say that she smelled alcohol, so maybe he just meant like early in his drinking session. It's <laughs> maybe you shut your mouth. Uh, oh shit! I, it's one of those. Is as you said. I'm just gonna say, when it comes to the fight world, fight game, John Jones has everything that you can ask for. Yeah, everything. First off, he is talented. Okay, he can do it all. He can wrestle. He can use submissions. You know, he has submitted black belts like they're nothing. He has got a good stand-up game. He is dangerous as far as the way he uses his length. The other part that he doesn't get credit for, he's tough as hell. Yeah. He is a tough man that will take and he will not stop. He has got it all. <laughs> Just sometimes on the outside, of the, when you outside of it i don't understand the problems uh, you know you know you're gonna have to take these tests it's part of the game and and, and the promotion that you're working for and so you know yeah. I, I i can understand where you know you can get irritated at certain times based upon you know hey having someone come and watch you piss into a fucking cup not fun not at four. Not like, like but, you shouldn't be mad at four not, in the afternoon. If it was five yeah, a.m. or six a.m., like fuck you, assholes. Yeah. Or if you came at eleven thirty at night, I'd be like, come on, really? Like you waking yeah. me up for this shit? Like, and I, he did, he did put out a video of them leaving, and you know, and he's giving them like fist bumps and high five things. So it's like kind of like he's saying, "Hey, I didn't do the things that she's saying." So there's there's that the, the point where you can look at, you know, he's just he's walking them out. I mean, who knows what happened? I I I, w I hope it's not where John was having uh, problems with him. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't I, let's let's just wait till it all settles out. Let's see what happens. Um, it's it's kind of he said she, she said filed, she filed a police report. I know that's crazy. I mean, it's like I can understand if you go to your you know hey. I don't want to go to this guy's house anymore. Okay. But let me ask you this. Like what, what happens in the court of law when it's a, he said, she said like, and then also to the video Nothing. footage showing that it's a what, high five. I gave you a high five before I left. So I really wasn't that offended or was I just trying to get out of there as fast as I could and be friends? Yeah. It's yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be friendly because I'm scared of you is what she's going to say. Oh man. That's weird. okay. Just awkward. I want to see John back in the cage as fast as possible. So, Hopefully, uh, he's all getting healed up per, uh, as quick as possible so we can see him back in there. Anything else for us, Dave? That's going to wrap us. That's going to wrap us today. We gave you an hour and 33 minutes at 5 a.m. You guys, we do this shit for you guys. We do it for you guys. So make sure you guys hit that <laughs> subscribe button down below. Hit the bell and notifications and the thumbs up. I want to thank you guys. Leave a comment down below, too, on what some topics you guys might want us to talk about. And... Um, don't be afraid, man. Try to keep it positive, guys. Come on. I see you guys bashing each other. I feel like there's a fist fight going on down there sometimes. I got to step Damn. in and just talk hella shit to instigate it even more. I love it. So um, blow us up in the comments. Hit us up and then go to OnlyFans.com slash Wayne and subscribe to us over there. It is free. Try to do it live this week. There's a lot of content that's hopefully going to be out this week with the uh, press conference, with the uh, weigh-ins, with you know the fights, everything. 
We're going to try to do some extra content for you guys this week for UFC 300. And uh, go to WayneAndMerch.com, pick up some of our short sleeves, long sleeves, hoodies, sweatshirts, all that stuff. Sweatshirts, yeah, sweaters. Sweaters. Sweatshirts. Groundhog Day. There you go. Groundhog. Oh, is it Groundhog Day? <laughs> you, you. Same old, same old, uh, baby. Same old, same old. It, it is for you, baby. It is for me. I don't know what day Groundhog Day is. It feels like it always feels like it's the same day. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I want to thank you guys so much for continuing to subscribe to us and stay subscribed to us and um and just listening to us, man. We appreciate you guys. And uh John, take us away. For everyone out there, we hope you enjoyed the fights. Looking forward to a big week coming up. So hang in with us. Come on back and we will see you.